Greetings from the New York City College of Technology. Welcome to lecture number four. Today, we're learning about capacitors. So, what does it mean to be a capacitor? Well, a capacitor, so capacitor probably looks a little bit something like this. You've got two holes on either side for the anode and the cathode. Kind of like a mini arcade machine. So, uh, what you're going to want to do is you take each of these holes, you plug a wire into them. It can be the anode and cathode or vice versa. Uh, they're actually interchangeable. It doesn't really matter. And, oh crap. You plug them into the anode and cathode of two parallel plates. So here's parallel plate number one, and here's parallel plate number two. So the other one might be connected right over there on the other side. So what does the capacitor actually do in this situation? Do I have a paper cut? No. Well, the capacitor is essentially taking electrons what the, and transporting them to be held on the plate. And this plate's capacitance, represented by C, essentially represents its ability to hold charge. Now, this capacitance is represented by the formula Q equals C times V, or C is equal to voltage divided by charge. So, pretty simple, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, charge divided by voltage. Uh, I'm brain dead. So, uh, by the way, if you put inside a dielectric material, for example, cardboard, in between our two charged plates, this will increase the capacitance because charges are able to be stored there, too. So the capacitance goes up. By what factor it goes up is called the dielectric constant. And of course, it depends on the material. In our lab testing that we did today, turned out that acrylic over here had a much higher uh, dielectric constant than textolite, which still had a much higher dielectric constant than cardboard. So that's what capacitors do. Now, let's talk about capacitors' role in circuits. So our simple circuit before just has a resistor and a battery. And charge flows through from the positive terminal, gets a little bit stuck over here, and flows all the way to the negative terminal. But now we're adding a little wild card. These two parallel plates which are able to hold charge. So now, how does adding a capacitor into our system change how the system works? Well, here's the thing, first of all. Now, one point has to have one single potential. If we come all the way back around from one end to, of the circuit to the, uh, another, then we should have the same potential at the end. Mm. So that means that the sum of everything we have, the initial potential difference, and then we can subtract IR, which is our classic formula, and this would normally be our formula, V1 equals IR, very simple. But now, actually, since we have a capacitor added to the system, 
we have to use our formula q equals cv, or in other words, v equals q over c, we have to subtract that factor as well in order to get the true amount of voltage, the true potential difference. All right, so now you will recognize that i is actually d, a function of q. It's dq dt. No, sorry, it's not a function of q. It's the derivative of q over time. So here we have an extremely classic equation. Now, here's the thing. What happens when we take the derivative over time of this whole thing? Well, this initial thing is a constant. It's just a scalar. That goes to 0. We get d squared q over dt squared r minus dq dt 1 over c is equal to 0. And we can ignore these because they're constants. So how do we solve one of these? Well, what's our characteristic equation? It's going to be rx squared minus 1 over cx is equal to 0. How do we factor that? Well, we get x squared minus 1 over rcx is equal to 0, which means that we get x minus 1 over rc times x minus 0 which means our two solutions are e to the 0t and e to the t over rc. And just add a negative because it's cool. So did I make a sign error anywhere? Is this supposed to be a plus or a minus? Am I going? No, minus. <laughs> uh, what the fuck? No food, no water, no shelter <laughs> for you. What the fuck? <laughs> Don't fucking kill me, boy! Don't kill me, boy! <clears throat> okay. Oh, oh. No. Okay. So I've determined that I did make a mistake. Since there's a negative right here, this should also be a negative, which means there should be a negative sign right over here, which means this is actually x plus 1 over rc. What? Why are you looking at me like I'm lying? If we factor out x, we get minus x minus 1 over rc equal to 0. So we get minus 1 times x minus 0 times x plus 1 over rc, which means that our solutions are e to the 0t and e to the minus 1 over rct. Of course, this is 1, which means it's not an actually valuable solution. So this is our actual formula. See. Sand. Imagine if we could look so closely, we could see each grain, each particle. You see there are patterns in everything.